Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I am bringing you, well I've called it my quad triangle top box because I hadn't got a clue what else to call it. Um, I suppose it's not really a quad, but it does have four triangles, so I don't know. If you could think of, of another name or a better name for it, then by all means, leave me an idea in the comments. Um, unfortunately, it will all be linked and ready anyway on my blog and stuff, but yeah, I, I, I couldn't think what to call it, so I thought, well, let's just be really confusing. It could just be a fancy fold top box, I suppose, but hey-ho. Anyway, I've used beautiful uh, Needlepoint Nook DSP, which is one that I haven't used before, um, and it's really quite pretty. I, I wasn't sure when I saw it in the catalogue, but once I've got it sort of in my hand and looking through it, it is really quite pretty. Um, I prefer the smaller patterns than the big, bright, bold ones. Um, so this really caught my eye, the little intricate flowers and leaves I think is beautiful. And I also used the petal pink and silver baker's twine before I remembered that Old Olive goes with this. <laughs> so that will be on the one that I make with you, but yeah. Um, and I also don't have the stamp set. So, you know, I don't have everything. I, I don't have an endless supply of cash, unfortunately. Um, so I went with what I had and I thought that crafting uh, forever actually went quite well with this because, you know, it, it's needlepoint, which is a craft. Um, there's scissors and there's twine here that you could sort of think could be thread, maybe. Um, so, yeah, so I actually... I thought a little bit outside the box, which is unusual for me, and went with this stamp set. So as you can see, I've got um, the scissors stamped in the background there, um, and then this lovely do something creative every day, because I think you should. keeps your mind going. Um, so yeah, so let, let's get on and make it. So you need a sheet of DSP that is going to be 11 inches by 7 and a half inches. In centimetres that will be 28 by 19. If you've got a pattern on your paper, which I have, and I also had for this one, and this one more so, um, this one you could perhaps get away with it, although I feel these are upside down, so I think that is the correct way. So if you're going to have a, a patterned paper with diagonals, uh, with directional images, then you need to turn your paper anti-clockwise. So your pattern, if you like, is running from right to left. So on the short side then, we're going to be scoring at... Let's get rid of that cutting blade. We don't want to do that by mistake. So we're going to be scoring at three and a half and six inches. And in centimetres, that is nine and 15. And then we're going to have our DSP back facing the correct way. So your pattern uh, is, is looking correct at you. Uh, we're then going to score on the long side at three and a half. Five, uh, eight and a half. Oh, the light's reflecting on my trimmer. And ten inches. And so in centimetres, that will be nine, thirteen, twenty-two, and twenty-six. Okay, so the next thing we need to do then is bring in our ruler and our scoring tool. And what we're going to do is, um, if you can see, it's probably quite hard with this pattern not much better that side either oh well maybe it is a little what you need to do is let's find I'll tell you what let me just just very loosely fold these so that you can see where I'm at with stuff I will be burnishing it in a moment but I'm just folding it to so that you can see where we're at so you have three skin oh didn't do that one three skinny panels okay so we have one here and then two here Okay, so you've actually got two three and a half by three and a half or nine centimeter by nine centimeter squares at the top. So in these large squares, what you need to do is score from this top corner down to this corner where your score lines meet. So we're going to score that way. And then we're going to score from the opposite side. So again, from that corner down to that score line corner there. Give it a good crease, a good score, sorry. 
make sure that you've got a good line there now I've overdone that and I've got a double never mind likewise on this square we need to do exactly the same so from that corner where the score lines meet up to the top corner there and again from this corner to this one the same again then what you need to do is score a line through the center to the sides okay so in effect you've got let me grab my pencil you are scoring that shape okay so it's like a star so again line and um, instead of having to measure which I originally did and it just didn't look it didn't fold correctly if you line the cross where you've scored it's really hard for me to show you with this paper in this light where you've scored your triangles and where they meet in the center if you line your ruler up with that center point and the center point of that one you should have a straight line now i'm looking at my dsp and that tells me that's not straight because there's a big gap however i'm not overly concerned because oh that's better i didn't have it straight so this will be the same distance all the way along so you know that you've got a straight line and again we're going from that score line to the next one so just across the center of that square and the same on this one so just across the center and so you have hoping you can see oh no oh there we go a bit better that way so you can see now we have that cross section can you see? i'm hoping you can see that now so let's go on and fold and burnish so all of the straight lines that we did on our trimmer or our simply scored we're just going to fold and burnish and i'm just reinforcing those ones i did by hand and also these nice long ones okay then we need our scissors so again with those star scores at the top here we're going to cut up the bottom pieces here so as you know these are going to be your base panels so we're just going to cut up those and then this tiny little square on the end here we're going to cut away and obviously create a little bit of a wedge there and equally the long skinny one on the top that's going to go away too okay so we're left with our little tab just there we've got our bottom pieces here cut up and then we're going to do exactly the same with the top so this is my crazy scored star it's the easiest way for me to explain it so again i'm going to cut down that one and down the side of this one and then the other side of this one so you now have this shape of paper so you've got your bottom bits here and your top bits here okay so what we need to do first is fold our um, horizontal score line that we made over towards you Okay, so give that a score equally on the other one. Same again, give it a score. Okay, then flip it over so that it's on its back, if you like. And then we're going to fold the diagonal score lines and score those two. So you're now reinforcing those score lines that you did by hand. And go with the score line. Don't think, well, that's not equal, that's not straight, that doesn't work. Just go with the score lines because otherwise it may not look correct when you've finished. And now you can see with that one, we've got that beautiful effect going on on the tops. Okay, so what we need to do now is pop some adhesive on 
our little tab here and remember it is DSP so snail is absolutely fine so I'm just going to fold that over and then as we do with any of our boxes pop the sides in the back in and then run some DSP across that base piece there and then just fold that over make sure it's all straight and then I'm just going to pop my hand inside and just press that down to make sure the DSP is stuck okay so there's the basic part of our box so what we then do now is we fold these long I want to call them arms I don't know why these long side pieces in and then we're just going to fold these pieces Oh, excuse me and we're just going to fold these in and as you can see that is our box made up so I'm going to use my good old handheld punch I so hope they're going to replace this with something good because I use this so much and I'm just squeezing this piece together and pinching the top part and you can either mark the uh, distance as to how far you want to um, punch your hole or you can be like me completely wing it and then just guess and then you've got your holes so I have some of the beautiful um, olive, old olive baker's twine here and I also have a very good, I keep it up here, a darning needle because that eye on my darning needle, you can see there, is really big so I can get ribbon through it um, and it's fantastic and so it just means that that takes me a second and it's so much easier than fighting trying to thread it through. So old olive baker's twine through those and then I'm just simply, I'm not pulling them tight because I don't want them pulled tight. I just want them to hold in place, if you like. And then I'm just going to make my bow. And the good thing about Baker's Twine is that you can kind of tell it where you want it to go. And to a degree, it will do it. Although this one isn't now because it's proving me wrong. Right, so... I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just going to trim that slightly. It's not looking the best. Oh no, that's better. It just doesn't want to sit forward, that piece. I don't know why. Anyway. That's my ribbon tied, or my twine, sorry, tied up on the top. This one looks so much prettier. I think it's because the twine's a bit thicker, maybe. So, now I just need to decorate it. So I've got some old olive card and my one and three quarter inch circle punch is actually really quite scratched on the top there I didn't realise how bad that was so old olive card and my one and three quarter circle punch I then have some whisper white here that I'm going to do my stamping on oh crumbs making so much noise so I'm actually going to go with petal pink and my scissors again just because I think it's lovely so I'm just stamping that on there and then I have my old olive that I'm just going to stamp my sentiment over the top it's not that straight but I'm not too concerned because it doesn't matter if the scissors aren't straight so I have one and a half circle punch now just to layer it down and I quite like that get some snail just to pop on there and we're just going to layer that on top and then a couple of dimensionals and you could decorate this any other way you wanted to really add different embellishments or trimmings or something on it and then just going to pop that on the front my bow is not going to sit pretty is it but there they are they're on my quad triangle top boxes 
I hope you like them and I hope you like this DSP too. Um, don't forget to hop on over to my blog where all the instructions and measurements are um, and also links to all of the products that I've used. Hope you have a great day and weekend and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye!